Right now, new hope for Packers fans as multiple sources report the quarterback could be close to a deal that would keep him in Green Bay for at least one more season. And Madison police are stepping up patrols in one west side neighborhood after a string of burglaries. Plus, new data about the number of speeding tickets given out on East Washington Avenue as safety concerns on the road continue. This is News 3 Now at 6. It's about character. It's about culture. It's about doing things the right way. And well, that was then. Aaron Rodgers speaking about his future with the Green Bay Packers on ESPN. And this is now a tweet from NFL Network's Ian Rappaport suggesting Rodgers will suit up with the Packers this season, though that has not yet been confirmed. It's just one of many reports and tweets we've heard about Rodgers' future with the team today, just days before the start of training camp. Our Jordan Reed has been following these developments all day. Jordan, what do we know? Well, Eric Charlotte, in the last couple of hours, ESPN's Adam Schefter saying over the weekend that Rodgers and the team were able to mutually agree on terms and they are close to an agreement. But it sounds like with this new deal, only Rodgers will stay in Green Bay for this season. Schefter says the deal comes with concessions like voiding the last year of his deal and adjusting his contract to help with cap room now. And all these negotiations are coming right at the last minute. The Packers report for training camp tomorrow with practices getting underway on Wednesday. And this news has a domino effect. That extra cap room might mean some wiggle room for star wide receiver Devontae Adams. Schefter is reporting he's now willing to talk about a contract extension with the Packers saying he's open to a deal. We'll be keeping a close eye on these talks and we'll let you know when things are finalized. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Jordan. We've got an alert day in our forecast for Wednesday night. Let's check your certified most accurate forecast. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? Yeah, that'll be when uh, we have a round of thunderstorms move through that will hopefully break the heat that we've had over the last few days. Visible cloud track shows quiet conditions across much of Wisconsin other than the far northeastern portion of the state, but there are some thunderstorms up around uh, Green Bay and Door County. More thunderstorms developing north of the U.S.-Canadian border are moving into northern Minnesota where a severe thunderstorm watch has been issued. Those storms could move into northern Wisconsin later on tonight. Then tomorrow, more storms developing out to the west reach us late tomorrow night, but our best chances for severe weather will be Wednesday night as a line of storm sweeps on through and hopefully puts an end to the heat and humidity. So an alert day is in the forecast for high winds, heavy rain, and small hail in those storms on Wednesday night. Temperatures right now right around 90 here in Madison. We're at 89, but Janesville still at 91. Dew point temperatures are around 60 in Madison, mid-50s in Janesville, but already in the 70s out toward La Crosse. Temperatures only dropped around 70 tonight. Tomorrow's high around 90. Just a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm during that time. The better chances come Wednesday night. I'll have more details in weather in a few minutes. Gary, thank you. In addition to being one of East Washington Avenue's deadliest years, 2021 may go down as the toughest year yet for cracking down on East Wash speeders. Before this month, Madison police were already on track to beat a five-year record in handing out speeding tickets on that corridor. They had issued 151 from January through the end of June. For comparison, 2017 was the next highest recorded in the last five years with 178 speeding tickets the entire year on the road. But now, after a back-to-back -back pedestrian deaths at the end of June, and early July, enforcement has skyrocketed. East Wash is where investigative reporter Naomi Coles joins us now. And Naomi, you've been reporting on safety issues on this corridor now for weeks. What is different, though, about July? What's different are the numbers. July has nearly doubled its speeding tickets, and that's not what compared to, say, last month. That's when compared to the entire first six months of the year. So Madison police, just over this past weekend, Friday night and Saturday, they issued 30 tickets. Earlier this month, in just a five-day time span, they issued 70 tickets. Now that puts us at, in July alone, at least 100 speeding tickets issued, but we know it's actually higher than that. They have posted about other enforcement projects along East Wash where they didn't give a total count of tickets. That data is still in the works, but the spike this month is thanks in part to state funding. It's paying for a lot of officer overtime to run these speeding traps. They run with a lot of efficiency. One officer will sit with a laser and then he radios up to five officers lined farther up the road. That results in a staggered rolling speeding trap for over a spe uh, several hour period. Now enforcement isn't the only issue. As I've reported extensively in the past, a lot of residents in this area, they're also calling for a lot of redesign to this road. That's all online at channel3000.com. News 3 investigates.
Madison police feel like they're playing defense right now, not a position they want to be in. They're hoping to turn the tables, though, on suspected burglars through boosted patrols and your help. And tonight, Brad Hamilton is live from where this is all happening along Barton Road after speaking with police and neighbors. Brad? Madison police did confirm that they are going to be stepping up uh, enforcement here over the next few days as they try to bring peace of mind back to this neighborhood. I would say it's not worth it, but that feeling hasn't stopped whoever is burglarizing homes on Madison's west side. At around 2 in the morning on Friday, police were called to a home on Barton Road. The caller said someone entered their home through an open back door and stole some of their belongings. I, I'm sure it's extremely violating and frustrating, and it just, you know, if, if it were me, and it, and it was uh, a, a few years ago, I remember feeling what that was like to have um, something of your personal effects taken from you. Police confirmed the break-in, and then two more people reported attempted break-ins of their own home nearby on Dorset Drive. It's not worth it for the thing and it doesn't it's not worth it for um, having someone else maybe uh, someone like your mom or your dad feeling unsafe. Madison Police Captain Tim Patton says that his department is now deeming this area a hot spot for break-ins. Stepping up his team's enforcement is how he plans to combat it. Bit of a a reactionary game and we're doing the best to sort of uh, play defense but also predict where what's going to happen the next night. As for whoever is committing these crimes, Captain Patton has a strong message for them. You're undermining people's safety in the place that they should feel the most safe. Captain Patton also mentioned to us that they did identify suspects, but no one so far has been arrested. Reporting live here tonight in Madison, Brad Hamilton, News 3 Now. Brad, thank you. The man accused of killing UW-Madison student Brittany Zimmerman in 2008 was in court today for his arraignment. David Call was found competent to stand trial last month. Today, he did not speak in court. A not guilty plea was entered on his behalf. His next court date hasn't been set. A Portage woman ha was among those hurt in a deadly four car crash in Texas Sunday. It happened on US Highway 59 in Lufkin, Texas. Authorities say a tire on a Ford F-350 blew out, causing the truck to strike Alicia Stevenson's car. Her car then hit another car. A teen traveling with Stevenson was pronounced dead on scene. Stevenson was hospitalized. The truck also hit a fourth car. Multiple other adults and children are hospitalized. Former Milwaukee Police Chief Alfonso Morales is one of the finalists for the City of Fitchburg's open chief position. Morales is still waiting for a final vote on his settlement with the City of Milwaukee. You'll recall he was demoted to captain last summer, then retired. He then won a lawsuit after a judge ruled he had not been given due process. Now, other finalists for the Fitchburg position include Madison Police Lieutenant Scott Kleinfeld, Cross Plains Police Chief Tony Ruska, and Salt Lake City Police Chief Vic Siebenbeck. The, uh, they'll all take part in tours and interviews next week. They were chosen by the Police and Fire Commission. We spoke to Fitchburg's mayor today about what he's hoping to see in the next chief. To me, I think the most important thing is trust, and that's trust with residents primarily but also trust with other city departments, with the police department itself. That trust is a really, really important piece right now. Community members can ask their own questions at a meeting on Tuesday, August 3rd at the IUPAT Training Center in Fitchburg. Former Fitchburg chief was promoted to city administrator. Over at the state capitol, Assembly Republicans plan to try to override the governor's veto of legislation seeking to cut off federal unemployment benefits. They've called an extraordinary session for tomorrow. The enhanced benefits of $300 a week are set to expire in September. The legislature passed a bill cutting the benefits off early, arguing it was preventing people from going back to work. Governor Evers then vetoed that bill. Assembly Democrats say they plan to uphold the veto. Governor Evers is calling a special session to coincide with the veto override attempt. He says if lawmakers plan to work tomorrow, he'd like them to put more money toward education as schools continue to find ways to grapple with the ongoing pandemic. If they're going to come to Madison, then they have work to do. That's why I'm calling a special session of the legislature for tomorrow while well, they will already be here at the Capitol so that they can use that time to also make the meaningful investments in our kids and our schools that they should have made in the budget. 
The governor's proposal is to add $240 million for general education funding, $200 million for special education, and $110 million for the UW system. Now to a moment lawmakers say will create a better Wisconsin for people of color. New at 6, Representative Sheila Stubbs and other advocates are celebrating the deregulation of hair braiding in the state. Brady Mallory shows us the impact. Brady? Well, today's supporters of Assembly Bill 121 held a news conference to talk about why this is important for black Wisconsinites. The bill passed last month, and it makes it legal for people to braid without a barber's or cosmetology license. Representative Stubbs says this eliminates barriers for hair braiders, which has included the cost of getting one of those licenses in order to braid. Stubbs says this opens up new opportunities for braiders in the state, but passing this isn't just about hair. And we've moved one step closer to making Wisconsin a more equitable state because we all know the state of Wisconsin has plenty issues. In fact, we're the worst state for African Americans to live in. But because I live here and my family live here, we have to change the narrative. Stubb says this will help create more jobs for braiders and allow them to do it outside of their homes. Other states have introduced similar le legislation. Wisconsin is now the 31st state to do so. Still ahead at 6, we're checking in on the final preparations for the CrossFit Games. And COVID-19 surging across the nation as health officials and COVID patients plead with people to get their COVID vaccines. Stay with us. Forecast, plenty of sunshine through today for the season. from our entire line of vehicles at the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales Event. See Lexus of Madison. Fry Construction is celebrating 26 years of providing excellence in home improvements. We strive to exceed the expectations of our clients with each and every project we do. Respected by your neighbors and voted Best of Madison two years in a row. Best kitchen and bath design, best roofer. Experience the Best of Madison for yourself and save 26% off gutters or insulation with any full roofing project. Schedule your consultation today at fryconstruction.com. Get you, young man. Free installation. Coming right up. Feldco's biggest sale of the year. Free installation. Plus, no interest until 2023. Free installation on window siding and doors and Saturday. Call now. Call 866 for Feldco. Is your credit score getting in the way of things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit help you borrow up to $10,000. So check your eligibility on netcredit.com today without affecting your credit score. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. I'm News 3 Now's Josh Spreider. I'm visiting the people, places, and events that make this area one of a kind. Tell me what inspires you, and it might be featured on News 3 Now this morning. In the 608, weekdays on News 3 Now this morning. Watching News 3 Now at 6. COVID-19 infections continue to surge in every state, and tonight some communities are starting to reimpose restrictions. David Begno reports from Jackson, Mississippi, the state with the lowest vaccination rate in the entire country. As the Delta variant of the coronavirus continues to spread, the city and county of St. Louis has become the latest community to reinstate an indoor mask mandate. Wear a mask to protect those around you and to stop the spread. New projections show that COVID-19 cases will likely continue to rise nationwide over the next few months. Daily deaths could more than triple from their current levels, rising to about 850 a day. Unvaccinated individuals account for virtually all of the hospitalizations and deaths in the United States. New York City has announced that nearly all municipal workers will be required to get vaccinated by September or else they must be tested weekly. This is about what we need to do to bring back New York City. This is about keeping people safe. In Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the largest hospital in the state has stopped scheduling non-emergency surgeries because of the surge in cases. Well, I want to tell everybody, please take the shot. We spoke with COVID patients in Jackson, Mississippi. 
including 38-year-old Edward Clifton, who is unvaccinated, <coughs> and the wife of 52-year-old William Ball. He got sick with COVID nine days after he had a heart attack, and he is also not vaccinated. He will get the vaccine when he gets out of the hospital. When he said, I want that vaccine, tell me what you're thinking. He's got to get out of the hospital first. Eighty-seven percent of the people hospitalized for COVID here in the state of Mississippi are not vaccinated. And when you look at the data nationally, that number jumps to 97 percent of the people in the hospitals have not been fully vaccinated. David Begno, CBS News, Jackson, Mississippi. Today, President Biden announced that long-term symptoms of COVID-19 could be considered a disability under federal civil rights laws. He says his administration will work to make sure COVID long haulers have access to the accommodations required by law. Here in Wisconsin, less than half of the population is fully vaccinated with 49% saying they've completed the vaccine series. 51% have at least one dose. But Dane County has hit a vaccine milestone. 70% of residents have at least one dose of a COVID vaccine. 67% have been fully vaccinated. Public Health says Dane County is one of the most vaccinated counties in the country. More than 50 health care groups are asking health care employers to mandate COVID vaccines for employees. The American Medical Association, American College of Physicians, and the American Public Health Association are among the groups behind a statement released today. The statement says vaccination is the best way to fight the disease. Still ahead at 6, Gary watching Wednesday night for the possibility of rain and severe weather. He's got the details next in your first warn forecast. So what's your secret? I guess I just try to help people. And it makes you smile? Yeah. Like this? Yeah. But it's not supposed to hurt. Yeah. Unbeatable service without the drama. Two pair plus a free eye exam, as low as $59.95. Looks like it's time to trade, because it's trade month at your local Ford dealers. Get more cash for your eligible trade-in. Any brand, any model, all month long. Get trade assist cash on top of what your eligible vehicle is worth and trade up to a new Ford SUV. Your trade-in is worth more than you think, only during trade month. Right now, get up to 2,000 trade assist bonus cash on eligible models. It's trade month at your Wisconsin and UP Ford dealers. If your credit card debt is out of control, if you're in over your head in monthly payments, there's a secret the credit card companies don't want you to know. If you have more than $10,000 in credit card debt, you have the right to let us settle that debt for a fraction of what you owe. That's bad news for the credit card companies, but it's great news for you. We're Credit Associates, and we're offering you free information on how to completely resolve your credit card debt with a monthly payment you can afford. To see how much you can save, call now. 1-800-914-7929. Don't declare bankruptcy. Don't consolidate. Give us 10 minutes and we could save you thousands. After all, we depend on your success and offer a guarantee so there's no risk to call. Credit Associates. Live better, debt-free. We'll even show you how to use your stimulus money to jumpstart our services and get you debt-free faster than you ever thought possible. Call Credit Associates now to see how much you could save for free. Call 1-800-914-799. It's Steinhoffel's small space event, where all the furniture is designed to fit your condo, loft, or tiny home. Sofas, bedrooms, dining rooms, and more. It's all 35 to 50% off. And with Steinhoffel's special 60-month financing, your new room has never been more affordable. Steinhoffel's has the area's largest selection of in-stock furniture and mattresses. So shop now and save big, in-store or online at steinhoffel's.com. Finally, I figured out Stented Optical's secret. They actually listen to customers. Protect those eyes from screen time. For back to school, get a free blue light filter upgrade with any eyeglass purchase. Only at Stanton Optical. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. The 2021 CrossFit Games are about to begin. The events begin tomorrow and run through August 1st. Final setup and preparations are underway today. Volunteers and organizers have been 
putting up the signs, equipment, and preparing the fields and athletes for two weeks now. The six-day competition is CrossFit's version of the Olympics, bringing together 660 athletes from more than a dozen countries. The winner gets a $310,000 grand prize. Last year's event was moved out of Wisconsin due to COVID-19. You can also get everything you need to know about the CrossFit Games at our website, channel3000.com. It's going to be very hot and maybe even a little stormy during some of the CrossFit Games. Gary Canalti is back with... Yeah, we're watching uh, the potential for some severe weather Wednesday night. Now, uh, we have an alert day in the forecast for the potential for uh, high winds, hail, and heavy rain uh, through some of the storms that will form uh, late Wednesday evening and then probably move through Wednesday night and be done by Thursday morning. On Doppler track, there was a little cluster of storms moved through northeastern Wisconsin. That's kind of fizzling out. More storms developing up in far northern Minnesota starting to form a line, and a severe thunderstorm watch has been issued until midnight for areas up to about Duluth, Minnesota. The severe weather potential may extend farther into Wisconsin later on tonight. There's an enhanced risk of severe thunderstorms from northwestern Wisconsin through eastern Minnesota for uh, high winds and perhaps an isolated tornado. A slight risk about as far south as Wausau and then maybe a marginal risk to the far northern parts of our viewing area if any of these storms should hold together and pack enough punch by early tomorrow morning. Now tomorrow the next batch of storms will develop farther out to the west in Minnesota moving eastward but as they get into southern Wisconsin later tomorrow night they should weaken. Again an outside threat for an isolated strong to severe thunderstorm mainly west of Madison but our highest severe weather potential is going to be late Wednesday afternoon more likely Wednesday night into very early Thursday morning as storms develop up around the Twin Cities and then head southeastward they could form a line that brings the potential for some strong straight line winds as well as some very heavy rain in fact the very latest computer model forecast from future track shows some very heavy rainfall totals of uh, three or inches or more up a lot right along the Lake Michigan shoreline that could be as a line of storms interacts with the lake breeze front and really forms a persistent area of thunderstorms in that same general area. But you move inland and you go south and west of Madison and some areas may not get any rain at all. So this is not a slam dunk that we're going to see widespread thunderstorm activity on Wednesday night. On future track, the storms tonight weaken as they get into southern Wisconsin. Then we see a break during the day tomorrow, an outside threat that a thunderstorm could pop up tomorrow or tomorrow night. But even that severe weather potential stays out to the west of us. And then on Wednesday, you can see those storms developing by early evening up around the Twin Cities into central Wisconsin. Wisconsin. They head southeastward uh, in a couple of batches through the overnight hours and then notice by early on Thursday morning they start settling to the south and move out of the area. Three things you need to know in the forecast. Still before that happens we're going to look for hot and humid weather with high temperatures around 90 the next couple of days with high humidity. Then those storms Wednesday night and that'll be followed by a break in the heat and humidity. It'll be warm but less humid beginning on Thursday and lasting through the end of the week. So our forecast for tomorrow calls for a high of 90. The heat index about 93 to 98. Just a slight chance for a shower or a thunderstorm tonight, tomorrow, and tomorrow night. But then Wednesday night, that's when the better chances for storms come, and it's probably northeastern Wisconsin and eastern portions of the state more likely to see the, the brunt of the strong storms. The storms land early on Thursday, then we'll see a break in the heat and humidity, maybe a thunderstorm chance in the middle of the weekend and toward the middle of next week. News of the day, Aaron Rodgers likely to return to Green Bay. We'll have another recap after the break. Plus, we get to hear from President Mark Murphy. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Do you suffer from ED? Did you know there could be a way to relieve ED without harmful medications, needles, or surgery? Peak Performance for Men is here to help. Click or call now to treat your ED. And remember, our results make the difference. Enjoy the cool breeze with a new Larson Storm Door with styles that will match your home and features like a screen away retractable screen. Larson Storm Doors are all 11% off. Keep your doors secure with our selection of over 600 door locks. These locks are durable and come in a variety of designs and finishes to match your existing style. All Schlag door locks are 11% off right now at Menards. At U.S. Cellular, we know the local landscape, so we can help everyone stay connected for less. Right now, get up to $1,200 off any 5G phone. The choice is yours. Whether it's adapting the network for a strong signal where you work, or optimizing your coverage where you play, we're always hard at work to make sure our state-of-the-art 5G network works for you. 
Up to $1,200 off any 5G phone with no trade-in or hidden fees. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Meineke is continuing to make your safety our number one priority. Keep your engine working at its best by regularly changing your oil. Book your appointment for an oil change today. Meineke Car Care Center is here to help keep you safe on the road. There's a safe way to protect our kids from COVID-19 with a vaccine for kids 12 and up. Help your kids get back to being kids again safely. Visit vaccines.gov to find a COVID-19 vaccine near you or call 211 to learn more. Unlock a summer of possibilities in a new Chevy. Expand your options and your perspective. Find your next adventure in a new Chevy. Make no monthly payments for the rest of the summer on all Silverado 1500 Crew Cab pickups. Plus, get 2.49% financing when you finance with GM Financial. And get $2,000 cash allowance. Hi folks, coming up Tuesday on News 3 Now This Morning, the CrossFit Games kick off in Madison. What you need to know before you go. And Chris Reese is looking at a pretty hot forecast for those athletes. Join us from 4.30 to 7 for News 3 Now This Morning. has been what is Aaron Rodgers going to do? Well, finally, more clarity on his situation with the Packers as he and the team are close to an agreement that's according to ESPN's Adam Schefter. Now, like I said earlier in the newscast, it sounds like this new deal will only keep Rodgers in Green Bay for this season. This developing news shows just how quickly things do move. Earlier today, the annual shareholders meeting was held at Lambeau, and at this point, there was just some buzz about Rodgers. But regardless of where things stood even before today, it's always been clear that the Packers want their reigning MVP to stay. I think fans are frustrated with the situation. I think they it's kind of a pox on both houses, uh, us and Aaron. But, uh, you know, I, I think we've, we've been in constant communication. It's obviously months, and, uh, you know, I'm hopeful that uh, we'll have it all resolved. And things look to be getting back to normal in Green Bay, and that's also the case down here with Badger football. The team is just 40 days away from kicking off their new season at Camp Randall, and they'll get to do it in a packed stadium. Fans being allowed back into games and students filling out the student section. It doesn't come as a shock how hyped the team is about the upcoming season. I keep telling people it's going to be chaos, I feel. People are itching to get back. Fans are ready to rumble. Um, I think it's going to be a packed house pretty early, so I'm really excited for that. So all in all, very good day to be a Wisconsin sports fan, especially a football fan. <laughs> this is going to be a back and forth, though. We're going to keep an eye on this, Roger. So yep. Exactly how this contract works out and all this stuff. Exactly. So yeah, stay with us. We're going to just keep watching that developing news as it goes tonight, tomorrow, and the coming days with training camp on the horizon. Right. <laughs> I think he's got a, a side deal with Jeopardy. Yeah. <laughs> Take over. The, maybe he just might even pay more right? than being a quarterback. Mm -hmm. Final check, Gary. <laughs> Well, uh, we're watching some storms well up to the north of us right now, up in northern Minnesota. A severe thunderstorm watch has just been issued there. There could be the severe, there could be a, a threat for severe weather uh, over far northern Wisconsin tonight. Uh, tomorrow, that severe weather threat mainly out to the west of us, but it's Wednesday, late afternoon into Wednesday night for much of southern Wisconsin, and that's why we have an alert day in the forecast. Right now, though, temperatures are still up around 90, 89 right now in Madison with dew point temperatures around 60 here, but already dew points near 70 in central Wisconsin. Wisconsin, so the humidity will also go up. Look for uh, the heat index, which is around 90 now, to be in the 93 to 98 range tomorrow. Low tonight, 70. High tomorrow, 90. Just slight chances for thunderstorms through Wednesday, and then Wednesday night, that alert day. Storms will end on Thursday morning, and then a break in the heat and humidity as we head into the weekend and much of next week. All right. Gary, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News Street Now at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.